celebrate marijuana and irony in Portland and enjoy yourself. I'm gonna bring up this guy, man. If it weren't for him, there would be no marijuana freedom in Oregon. He's been at it for longer than a lot of you've been alive. Uh, he's got a show on Portland Cable Access, president of the Hemp and Cannabis Foundation, a longtime cannabis advocate and activist, and he's here for you right now. The founder, the producer of the Portland Hemp Song. Give it up for Paul Stanford. Thank you, Agayo. You know, I moved to Oregon back in 1984 because there was a group of very progressive people that were way ahead of their time working on legalizing marijuana. One of them's right here taking pictures. He moved from Iowa. I came down. Uh, he was Iowa normal. I was Washington State normal. We came here to help Dr. Fred Orther and uh, John Sajo and, like I said, a group of people that unfortunately were way ahead of their time. But we continued to work for marijuana legalization. We put an initiative on the ballot in 1985 that is still the earliest initiative to ever qualify in state history. We put it on in October of 85 for a vote in November of 86. And then the first drug czar, George H.W. Bush, George Bush Sr. of the Bush crime family, he uh, did a lot of bad things. But one of them was being the first drug czar. And uh, he toured the state for two weeks to build opposition to our initiative. Nancy Reagan did just say no and toured the state for three days. Every U.S. attorney from the Western United States, every head of the Department of Agriculture, they came here to oppose us. It was overkill. In the end, we just got 26% of the vote. But we moved forward. I started working on a way to legally sell marijuana, a model I called at first the Oregon Cannabis Control Act after the Oregon Liquor Control Act and then changed to the Oregon Cannabis Tax Act and we finally put that up for a vote in 2012 and with a very little budget we spent under a half a million dollars only about 80,000 during the the uh, the actual campaign after we made the ballot, we got 47% of the vote, and that blew away a lot of the people around the country. We went with a group of, a lot larger group of folks that this guy Travis Bauer and Anthony Johnson started organizing. We had a series of 30 meetings, basically changing the liquor control law into a, uh, a regulatory model. It was driven by funding that the Drug Policy Alliance, we basically did what the Drug Policy Alliance would let us do. But we got it on the ballot and we won with 56% of the vote, the biggest vote for cannabis legalization yet. And so now we're seeing huge changes, but we still have more changes to make. You know, we've been, this has been a lot better hemp stock than last year's hemp stock, but not as good as some of the ones in the past out at Kelly Point Park. But we think that we built a cooperative relationship with the local authorities, or so I hope. So that when we go to get our permit next year, they allow us to have it. You know, we didn't have the date for this event until September 10th. So we put it all together in about five weeks. So I think we've done a pretty good job. If you would, just for all the volunteers out here, if you give them a big round of applause, big ho. I want to thank all of you for coming out here. But you know, our job isn't done yet until everybody can grow their own and we can grow hemp without regard to its THC content. But the ones that make the best and most productive seeds, the varieties of cannabis that make the most fiber. Till we can do that without judging it by its THC content, until the whole cannabis tree, reefer madness, 
you know, repression that we've been forced to live through, some of which continued here at our event. Until that's over, we've got a ways to go. And you know, what I see as the goal is replace petroleum. If we can replace petroleum with hip seed oil, we'll change the world's economic paradigm. Instead of all the money going to Exxon and Mobil and Shell and the Saudi sheiks and the Nigerian despots, it will go to our farmers. Instead of seeing the further centralization of economic and political control, we'll see its decentralization. You know, that's a grandiose dream, but I think it's real and it's something we definitely need to happen for the health of our biosphere, for all our plants living here on Mother Earth. And until we can grow hemp without regard to its THC content, in fact, I think high THC is going to make 20 times more seed oil and protein and twice as much fiber as what I call the low THC dwarf hemp. Until we can do that, until somebody can grow their own and not worry about whether they're going to be arrested or they grew too much or, uh, you know, we're subject to our family and friends thinking we're all screwed up, then we don't have freedom yet. We've got to let science determine the outcome. And right now, science has been perverted by money and power. You know, marijuana prohibition has always been about money and power. It was never about drugs. That's a smokescreen. It's always been about the further centralization of economic and political control. And so, until farmers can grow hemp again, our work isn't done. You know, right now it's already cheaper to make hemp plastic, and hemp plastic is biodegradable. And even with low THC hemp, there's just not enough hemp seed oil to make enough of it. So when we make hemp seed oil cheaper, we will wipe out a lot of the use of petroleum, we'll save the glo stop global warming, we'll feed the world, we'll stop deforestation, We'll be able to use a medicine that makes us healthy and happy without being subject to ridiculous regulations that these people don't even really understand what they're doing. You know, there's some guy a long time ago that said, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. And uh, that's the fact when it comes to hemp and cannabis. That's what this thing's all about. We want to restore freedom. You know, it really comes down to freedom of consciousness. If we can't think the thoughts we want to think, if we can't feel the way we want to feel, if we can't make ourselves healthy and high and live in uh, peace with one another, not throw our brothers and sisters in jail, you know, over the oldest and most cr productive crop, not compare the use of cannabis to alcohol, because cannabis is a lot safer than alcohol. Yeah! It shouldn't be regulated as much as alcohol is. Until everybody understands that, and I think they will in five or ten years, then we got more work to do. Anyway, that's what Hip Stock's all about. And I want to thank all of you for coming out here. You know, our vendors really help pay for this thing. And so go out there and buy their food, buy their products, support our community, and help us restore him. Until we meet again, mahalo.